Bob from Oregon's Costume Carter. Welcome to the OCG Fam Show. To you, my YouTube buddies, what's going on? Let me know in the comments. Let me know down there. We'll talk about it. It's going to be super fun. Okay, let's just get into this comprehensive feeding regimen. We're working on it day two with our super hot, super exotic peppers. Uh, I gave them a good watering yesterday, but they're a little dry. They're drying up a little bit, so we're going to give them another watering. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Yesterday we had... Tim from Culture Biologics on the show talking about how uh, Dr. Root is effective for uh, doing that. If you're interested in that, watch yesterday's show. He also mentioned SLF and told us a little bit about why we should use that. But I thought, wouldn't it be good, straight from the horse's mouth, to talk to uh, Newton from SLF 100 about why you use this with seeds. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to try to get him on the, on the old screen here, and we're going to see if we can get something going on. Hold on a second here. Here we go. Can you see that? Newton, what's going on? Hey, Bob. <laughs> I'm trying to make you big on the screen here. Hold on a second. Oh, I can't quite mouse it up there. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, there we go. You look huge. You're, you're, a, little off, you're a little off center, though. <laughs> I'm over. There you go. <laughs> All right. So, um... What we got going, Newton, is we're mixing up our uh, feeding for our, our peppers. Do you, can you can you you see that they're a little dried up? We watered them yesterday. We're going to water them again. And we were talking to Tim McCormick from Culture Biologic yesterday, and he said that he thought the Doctor Root was a good choice. So we're putting some of there in there. But he also said the SLF 100 was a good thing to put in there. I'm going to carefully measure some of that out, put that in there. And the thing I was wondering from you is he told us a little bit about why he thought it was good, but uh, we like to get it straight from the horse's mouth. Why would we use SLF 100 with our seeds? Well, I agree with what Tim said. Oh, I'm getting a call here. That doesn't work. <laughs> uh, I agree with what Tim said. I listened to the video or watched. Okay. <laughs> I like that he said it, it's our enzymes. Our enzymes come from endophytic bacteria, from rhizobacteria, and then um, we keep those bacteria in there. So you're getting an inoculation of enzymes and an inoculation of bacteria for that that initial root zone that's popping out of that casing. So what are those enzymes doing? Those enzymes are breaking down that endospore, that that starch, turning it into simple sugars for the root zone. Okay, from the, the, the seed itself? The endospore. The endospore, what's that? That's the food for the beginning of the plant's life. So you got this little seed there and the endospore is a little part in there that's the, it's everything it needs to eat to, uh, to get through its whole thing. And you're taking that and helping that to break down more quickly, more efficiently, more right. uh, prodigiously. It's a, start, it's a starch and it needs to be broken down into simple sugar. Okay. Okay. And then so, the bacteria, what are the bacteria doing in there? The bacteria are infecting the plant tissue and they're also uh, inoculating or in infecting the roots of of the plant, becoming the, the plant's first um, immune system, or the plant's immune system. That's what it's it's doing. Well, cool. That Creating seems so... Life. What's that? Creating healthy life. Beautiful. Right. So let me ask you this then. It sounds like it's a slam dunk. That's what we should be doing is these two. Um, how does... does the Is there any cross between the SLF and the Dr. Root, something going on between those, do you suppose, or is this mostly just two different things working, doing their own stuff? Well, Dr. Root is definitely going to start feeding that microbial field or the microbiome of that, of that beginnings of that plant's life. So, uh -huh. absolutely, it's exactly what you want at the very beginning of a plant's life. Cool. Now, um, how often do you recommend, we watered yesterday, and it looked like it was drying up a little bit, and so I water a little bit more with these seeds. Just you're as a gardener, how often do you think I should try to shoot for water in this thing and having it, you know, get kind of dry between waterings? How, how should that all go? Uh, that all depends on how that soil is draining. Mm -hmm. uh, I typically like to let the, the top layer of soil become a little bit dry, especially uh, sounded like you were sprouting some peppers there. Yeah, uh, we are. Definitely don't want to keep that saturated. You don't want to start growing that green film on top or or green mold on top because you're you're 
your seeds will not sprout. You want them to dry out just a little bit. Uh huh. Um, but you don't want them to become dry either. So. So would you? Let me ask you this. I I've watered them a couple times here. I really don't see any runoff down in the tray. Would you water them until you have some runoff and then let it dry out from there? Or if you have good drainage, we're using some number four soil, or would you just keep watering them to, to keep them damp on the surface and not worry so much about getting runoff through the bottom of the plant? Um, I wouldn't worry too much about getting runoff through, uh -huh. through the soil. Initially, yeah, I'd want to saturate all of the soil. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And that's what we did, yeah, okay. Yeah. So now let me ask you this too. Uh, some people mentioned they thought maybe putting a, a dome over it. How do you feel about putting domes over stuff when you're propagating? Um, not, not my favorite way of propagating just because it can, can stay too moist in there. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That's just my preference. Everybody has their own preference. Let me ask you about that because someone mentioned in the comments that they thought putting a dome on there and in my mind I was thinking I can't really think of any reason not to, but it just didn't feel like something I wanted to do. Do you find that a lot with gardening that there's things that just don't feel right to you and that that's part of the logic of it? Yeah, you know, actually a long time ago, I, I tried using a dome and that was the biggest issue for me was it just never dried out like it should. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It, it just kept too much moisture in there and kind of created a, a soggy environment. Uh, but yeah. that, that could have just been my initial overwatering of poor drainage of soil or all different kinds of things, so. Different strokes for different <laughs> smoke situation. That's right. <laughs> Very cool. Okay. Well, I don't want to keep you. I sure appreciate you coming on last minute like this to talk about it. And, uh, you know, that's that's all, all we needed, I suppose. So we sure appreciate it. Sweet. All right. Easy for me. For more information about anything on today's show, go to our website, ocgfam.com. And if you buy anything while you're there, use the code FAMHARVEST. It's going to save you 20%, and it's a lot of fun. The OCG Fam Show, it's pretty good, it happens every day. It's the OCG Fam Show. See you tomorrow.